Senate can tonight reveal the true extent of germ warfare tests carried out in the southwest. Government documents show much of North and South Devon and parts of Somerset were used for experiments similar to those conducted off the Dorset coast during the 1960s. An independent inquiry has already been ordered into the Dorset trials to determine whether or not they've affected people's health. In a few minutes, we'll be speaking exclusively to the man in charge of this inquiry. But first, our environment correspondent Simon Hall has this special report, which includes film of the trials never previously seen on television. The germ warfare trials carried out in the 1960s and 70s were highly secret. This previously unreleased film of the experiments as they happened. Their existence was revealed last year when secret documents were declassified. They were thought to be carried out mainly in Dorset. A spotlight investigation has, though, discovered they were far more widespread than was previously thought, taking in parts of Somerset and much of Devon. This is the easternmost tip of Torbay. Out there is Lime Bay, and it was there that a ship made a series of passes spraying a gas which contained the germs. Now, the idea was to see how the germs behaved and survived as they passed over land, and so the prevailing wind conditions were chosen so that the germs were blown over here across the coastline and into areas such as South Devon. There were six runs between October 1964 and May 1965. The lines indicate the ship's tracks. Where the germs were blown to can be seen from the sampling points that were set up. They range from southwest of Torquay to just outside Lyme Regis. The news has caused concern. Surprised that it happened, horror that it could have happened, and, uh, and, and a hope that it's not ever going to happen again. What would you like to see done about what's happened? Well, I think the, the members of Torbay Council will want to raise it with our, our local MPs. Uh, I think at the very least some questions to be asked in the House of Commons. The experiments were not confined to South Devon. Other trials tested how the germs would survive in different conditions in different areas. These were based not on releasing a gas, but instead on exposing a narrow thread of material coated with E. coli to the air. These tests were carried out in January 1967. The threads were exposed first from a ship just off Ilfracombe, then on five other sites running through Somerset down to the sea off Dorset. I think people of Ilfracombe, when they come to hear of this, will be concerned. Uh, for instance, I was in my 20s at this time, in, in the 60s, um, and I was just getting married, starting up a family. They'll be worried. Will this have impl any implications on, on their health or the health of their children? Concerns have been raised that the tests may have harmed people's health. In East Lulworth, in Dorset, 21 families say they have experienced miscarriages and children being born handicapped and with other health problems. Robin Southey was one of the scientists who carried out the experiments. His widow, Anne Reid, is pressing the government for a full investigation into the trials. For Robin Southey died at the age of 33 from a rare disease which led to a perforated stomach. His immune system was said to be almost ineffective. The couple had two sons. One died at 17 from a brain tumour. The other suffers serious health problems. Their daughter is healthy. I, I was devastated. We had three little children. And with hindsight, there were questions I should have asked. But what else do you do when you've got three little children waiting at home and you have to go home and say, sorry, Daddy isn't coming home. He isn't better. And our, our lives were turned upside down. The government has always maintained the trials were safe. It says the germs used were naturally occurring and were treated to make sure they could not be harmful. It's a view supported by many experts. Well, health experts with the authority are looking all the time at the community and its health. And we've seen no evidence to date to identify any clusters of leukaemia, any unusual health conditions which some people have said have been associated with these tests. The experiments were carried out at the height of the Cold War. They were designed to assess Britain's vulnerability to a biological attack and to work on methods of defence. The fear, though, is whether some of the people the trials were intended to protect may in fact have been harmed by them. That's a question that should be answered within the next year, for the government has said an independent safety review of the experiments will be carried out by a leading microbiologist. 
We've been told today that the man leading that independent inquiry into the germ warfare trials is Professor Brian Spratt, who's a microbiologist at Oxford University. Earlier, I asked him if he could reassure people that the inquiry would really have the muscle and the will to get to the truth. Well, I, I believe so. Um, I'm, I'm an independent um, micro, academic microbiologist. I have no links with uh, the Ministry of Defence. I, I wasn't chosen by the Ministry of Defence, so I think my independence is assured. Um, I shall be reading uh, a large amount of uh, technical information about the, the trials that, that, would take, that took place in the 60s and 70s, and I shall be consulting widely, and not only with medical colleagues and with perhaps people that were actually involved in the trials um, in, from, from Porton Down, as it was then um, called. Um, I should also be, be asking for um, written, um, written presentations from, from people in the south of England that, that want to um, give me presentations. I should be coming down um, to the south of England and, and talking to anybody who wants to talk to me. So I, I hope it will be a, a wide-ranging and, and, and open and, and, and fair analysis of the, the safety issues of those trials. Now, secrecy and delays with information have prompted much concern in the past. How swift and how open can this inquiry now be? Well, I, I've got access to all of the files that are available, and I should be receiving those very shortly from the Ministry of Defence. And I've been asked to, to come to some conclusions and write a report um, within a time frame of, of six to to 12 months, and I, I hope it'll be closer to six than to 12. And the surprising information today that the trials weren't just in the Dorset area, but beyond. Can you examine the other trials that we're now hearing about as part of your inquiry too? Well, I, I can't give you a categorical answer to that. Um, as I understand it, some of the, the paperwork that I will receive from the Ministry of Defence do include trials uh, in, in, the, in the, the southwest of England, and if that is so, then, then certainly I'll look at those papers and, and make a judgment on them. Professor, thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to discuss the germ warfare trials, you can call your BBC local radio phone in. The number to call is 0645 That's 0645